and I asked if there was any shadow selves that wanted to present themselves to me. I'm like, I'm like feeling it. <laughs> So about two years ago, I had just turned 21. Oh, I'm getting like jittery because it's like I'm talking about stuff that I haven't talked about in a while, but it's important. So let's move it through. So about two years ago, I had just turned 21 and I had moved out of Pittsburgh where I went to school. I had lived with these two people who were my friends at the beginning of our lease, but at the end, <laughs> it was not, we were on rocky ground. 65% of the time we lived together was not a happy time. I would come and go, I wouldn't talk to them. The only person that would like acknowledge my existence would be my dog. Because things were shitty between us, I was looking for a method of escape. I, at that time, knew that I didn't really want to go to school, but my dad kind of pressured me into staying. And so I was like, oh, okay, what do I want to do now with my life? So I decided that because I didn't want to stay at Pitt, um, I was going to think about moving in with my partner at the time. We'll call him C. And I thought we were going to um, basically accomplish my dreams of being in a loving relationship, in a beautiful home, uh, with our pets and just living our best life. Moved to this like super small white town. It was like literally like it felt like there was like less than a thousand people there. Like I really don't think there was more than a thousand people that lived there. But it was highly white, super small, very racist, not a good place to be for a brown person. Because I was facing extreme isolation from other people, I dived super deeply into yoga and to spirituality. I was doing full moon rituals all the time, spiritual baths all the time. And this really just goes to show you that you can be doing a lot of spiritual stuff and not realize how much you're lying to yourself. And it brings, it brings up fear now. It really does. Um, I was crying earlier when I was thinking about recording this because I had realized how much I had changed for the better since this. But we were not happy. I wasn't happy. I was extremely unhappy. And um, I kind of just dove really deeply into spirituality. So I had heard all this stuff about people talking about shadow work this, shadow work that. And this again, like I said, I was 21. So it was 2019. It was like the middle or beginning of summer of 2019. So one rising, as I usually did, I would wake up obviously a lot earlier than him. I went to my yoga room, which was really nice. I had my own like entire room for spirituality and yoga. It was great. I decided to go on my laptop and I was like, what is shadow work? Like, what is shadow work? What does that even mean? So I Googled it and I read this super long article all about um, what shadow work is, what it looks like. I even did like this like free download downloadable PDF to like start learning more about my shadow work. And because I was in this like super deep spiritual state, I even though I wasn't alone, it felt like I was alone because he was like knocked out. Like he was knocked out. It was literally just me and our cat um, that were up in our house. So after taking my notes and after really just kind of starting to develop an understanding of what shadow work is, I decided to do something that I had never done before, but I felt really called to do it. And I'm really glad I followed my intuition. I decided to close my eyes and I asked if there was any shadow selves that wanted to present themselves to me. I'm like, I'm like feeling it. <laughs> In this dark inner world that I had turned to, I saw before me a creature, a very dark creature with like jag, jagged, like almost like Godzilla with like the like triangle things. And it was black with red menacing eyes and it had super long claws and it looked at me and it said you think you're cool now you want to get into anime now okay what about the little girl in middle school who wanted to get into that what about the little girl who loved that what about her where were you when that girl needed you so now you want to come here and you want to start embracing this shit again and you think shit's cool you think it's fucking cool but what about her what about the girl you cut off because you didn't feel like you, you were going to fit in? What about the girl you left? The girl you cut off? Because you wanted to be palatable for these cool kids. 
People you don't even have in your life anymore. But you wanted to be like them. You wanted the attention. So you thought you could cut off pieces of yourself so you could fit in better. You thought you weren't good enough. You didn't think you were good enough. So you changed everything about yourself. You left everything you loved so you could be with them people. Where the fuck are they now? I let this shadow self yell all of these things out about how I abandoned myself. How I lied to myself. How I wasn't true to myself. And then now I'm trying to come back into this. Coming back to what I loved as a child. And this shadow self was not going to let me off easy. It was not going to let me just come back into this anime life and be cool now without making me see and remember the pain I felt in middle school and high school. How I decided to cut off pieces of myself and create shadow selves. How I wasn't true to myself. And you can hear my dog like, you can tell my dog thing knows I'm like distressed because he's like coming in. I had never before in my life experienced such a vivid visualization i was completely transported from that place i was in in the small rinky dink town in pennsylvania and transported to another dimension one that only i could see and feel and i could feel this creature's pain i could feel its anger and its sadness because it was abandoned it was left behind it was disregarded it was ignored for 10 years i knew that letting that being speak was very important because i needed to acknowledge that it, it was true that i had always been a very weird quirky girl very unique and because i didn't see people like me because i wanted people to like me to love me to want me i chose to release those things that made me so beautifully me some things were, you know, because family members were like, you shouldn't do that or that's not good or blah, blah, blah. And some things were definitely just me deciding that I wanted to fit in, that I wanted to be cool, that I wanted to be loved. And so I was going to change myself and release whatever didn't fit the mold. And I remember that same day I watched this video by Leo or Alexandra. And she said, why? Why would you want to be like them? Why would you want to be the same as anybody else when you can be yourself? And that was very powerful. Like that is the greatest gift that we receive when we sign that soul contract, when we choose our mother, and when we come out into this world and take that first. <sighs> From that moment, we are given the greatest and best gift that we can ever receive. And that is the gift of us. The gift that nobody else is like us. They might look a little like you. They might even be your family members that look just like you. But nobody is like you. Nobody. The more the shadow spoke, the sadder I got. Because I was like, that's my biggest fear. Being abandoned, being left behind. And I did that to myself. I did that to my inner child. So I looked up at this dark being and I hugged it. Total anime moment, right? Like hugging your demons, total anime moment. <laughs> the dark figure before me started to shrink and shrink and shrink until eventually what was left was a familiar sight. I hugged the shadow self and my inner child appeared. I made a promise to myself. I was never going to abandon myself. I was never going to leave myself. I was going to protect myself and I was going to trust myself to make the right decisions and to walk the walk that I wish to. I made a decision right then and there that I was going to do better because I was not going to create more shadow selves. That same day, I reached out to my sister who I hadn't spoken to in months. She had been very sick for the year before and I was scared. I was uncomfortable. I didn't know how to handle the fact that my sister could have possibly died and we weren't really speaking to each other. So I hit her up and I apologized. I told her that I would never have been able to forgive myself if I knew that she died and I just shut her out because I didn't want to deal with that. And I told her that I loved her and I wanted to do better. And she forgave me. She told me that our brother was quite uncomfortable too. It just kind of pushed her away. And in the spiritual and deeply religious way that she is, she just said that we all respond to things differently. And that she understood that we both felt very uncomfortable and decided to deal with it in our own way. Because of that reconciliation that I had with my sister that day, 
The second promise I made to myself was that I wanted to reach out to my siblings and apologize for what I did, reconcile with them. So when I moved back a couple months after that day, I was literally smacked in the face with the realization that Mr. C and I were not going to work out. I wanted better. So I left. And I moved back with my parents across the state to start over. And I'll be real, I didn't want to have that conversation with my mom, but it was necessary because when I chose to end that chapter, I gave myself the freedom to create something new. And I'm actually really, really happy with what I created now. But that wouldn't have been possible if I didn't choose me, if I didn't choose to confront things and to see things. This shadow work journey may not happen the way you think it will, but that's okay. Along my journey of reconciliation with my siblings, when I came back, reconciled with my second sister, that one was easy peasy. But then came my brother. When I was like 16, one day, I don't even remember what me and my brother were fighting for. It's my oldest brother. But we fought over something and I was angry. I was gonna let him know that I was angry. I stormed up the steps and I stopped halfway on the stairs, looked at him and I yelled, you don't even have a place to be angry. You're not my real brother, so you don't even have a chance to care. For those of you that don't know, I'm adopted. But these people raised me since I was like two seconds old. They are my family. They are. And I cannot imagine the anger and hurt he must have felt when I told him he wasn't even my real family. And from that moment on, we have not been the same. For years after that, I think when I was 18, I finally opened up and told my two favorite teachers and my best friend at the time, who was actually not my partner, I had told them about how that happened and how that was so fucked up for me to have said. Like that is incredibly terrible for me to have said. And I, I couldn't even, like I said, I couldn't even imagine the hurt he must have felt hearing that from me. And I told them about how I wanted to apologize. And that was at 18. I'm 23 now. So earlier this year, I decided to finally say what I wanted to say. But as you can tell from this video, I'm a little bit of a crier. And so I was nervous to say the least about what would happen if I decided to say it to him in person. So I decided in my super, you know, dramatic way and symbolic way, I found an old picture of us when I was one month old. And um, I think it was either him or one of my sisters was carrying me and it was like they were celebrating my like month birthday. My month, my, my month of being on this, you know, <laughs> in this, in this in the physical plane. <laughs> it was this gorgeous photo. So I wrote him a letter apologizing about the things that I said. So I said, I don't apologize for being my own person, but I apologize for the way that I hurt you with my words because I was angry. And I told him I want him to know that I'm trying to be a better person in that. I wanted him in my life because ever since that day when I was 16, we don't talk, we don't say hi to each other. He basically chooses to act like I am non-existent. But to be fair, I was also reciprocating that throughout high school and throughout the three years that I lived in Pittsburgh. Here's what I mean by sometimes the shadow work journey doesn't happen how you expect it to. I thought that if I apologized and I gave him the photo that he would just be moved and that he would remember the way we were when we were younger. Me and him were very, very close when we were younger, but he didn't. <laughs> I got no response from the letter. I didn't even get the photo back. And I had shared with my mom that I had wanted to try to reconcile with him. And I remember telling her, you know, I understand he's his own person. And if he doesn't want to reconcile with me, at least I'll have the peace of knowing that I said sorry, which is something I've been wanting to do for years. And then I saw him in person <sighs> and nothing changed and yet everything changed. He didn't even say hi. He didn't even give, you know, tell me any type of sign that he received and read the letter. It almost made me fear like, did I put it at the wrong spot? But um, no, I put it at the right house. He didn't want to make a sign. And that hurt a lot. I remember when I saw him and I was like, I felt my heart like jump up and like be excited at the chance of maybe us being able to turn over a new leaf, but he chose the way he chose. And that's okay. Because it is true, I did do what I wanted to do, something that I had been waiting for years to say, and I could at least now know, I could at least rest easy knowing that I 
put the peace laurel out there, wave the white flag, and I gave him a choice, a real choice, right? I didn't choose to just continue to ignore him. I gave him the actual choice of whether or not he wanted to reconcile with me. And I did what I, I did what I set out to do. I apologize. But it still hurt. It still hurt a lot. But that doesn't stop the shadow work journey. And it certainly is not going to stop me from reaching out to my other siblings and letting them know that I love them and I appreciate them. And that I want them in my life. It allowed me to have freedom to forgive myself and to give myself that closure. Even if he's not a part of the new chapter, I gave him the option to be. Hey guys, this video was recorded about a month ago, and since then a lot has changed. Me and my brother have reconciled, and I'm very grateful for that. But I wanted to keep this part of the video still, because when I thought that he wanted to have no relationship with me, I took that as a sign to go inward and to continue to ask Great Spirit for healing, not only for myself, but for him. And I'm so grateful to say that I've actually been able to see that reconciliation happen during this lifetime. I thought I was going to have to wait until I passed on into the next one. Guys, things might go very differently than what you expect, but it doesn't mean that it's not working in your highest favor.